Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Capital City Matters. I'm former mayor John Landwehr, now in semi-retirement. Um, we're continuing the program, though, because it was a lot of fun while I was mayor, and we've changed the focus a little bit. As you know, the last couple of times we've been interviewing and visiting with uh, some of our state leaders. Jefferson City is the capital city, uh, has a lot of these uh, very uh, fine leaders, and we, we bump into them sometimes on the street, but sometimes in Jefferson City we don't really get to explore a lot of things going on uh, in their important roles. Helping me today uh, with the program is somebody who's behind the scenes uh, has been very helpful, Elizabeth Hoffman. She's our student producer, and she's going to be with us for uh, several months anyway, but she's going to graduate soon, right, Elizabeth? Absolutely. Okay. Our special guest today is Elena Berrigan Scott, and uh, Elena is the director of a very important department in uh, in state government, and that's the Department of Revenue. Elena, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I think Elizabeth, Elizabeth uh, put together a few few things she wanted to start 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 the session off with. So, yes, Elizabeth, I'll yes. turn it over to you. And thank you, Elena, for joining us. Uh, maybe you can start with giving us a little history of your department. Uh, well, the Department of Revenue is um, a major agency. We interact with most people in the state of Missouri at least once a year. Uh, the Department of Revenue is responsible for processing tax returns. We collect tax and issue refunds, title and register motor vehicles, boats, trailers, licensed drivers, and we investigate a suspected violation of the laws that we administer. Um, I like to tell people that we are a high volume agency. The last fiscal year, uh, 2011, the department collected over $8 billion in the state's general revenue, uh, $2.7 billion in other state funds, and $1.1 billion in highway funds, primarily the uh, motor fuel tax. We also collect and distribute over 1,000 local option tax rates for uh, municipalities and other political subdivisions around the state. We, of course, uh, process individual income tax refunds, about three million. Uh, last year, we issued over a billion dollars in individual income tax uh, refunds. Um, 1.8 million motor vehicle titles um, uh, were issued last year by the department. Uh, 3.6 million vehicle registrations. You know, it could go on and on. <laughs> so, wow, that's really busy that's agency. Really something, yes. Well, and this time of year, we're talking about tax season. This is the time of year that uh, most of us tend to put off to the last minute, uh, myself <laughs> included sometimes. Um, but if you can kind of shed some light on the topic when we prepare mm -hmm. for our taxes, getting our information organized and together, um, what are some things that we can do so that we aren't overwhelmed whenever it's time to turn that in? Well, I would suggest starting it now. Don't wait until the last minute. Uh, the delay doesn't help. But um, one of the things that the department has been promoting uh, an awful lot in the last few years is e-filing. If you can e-file your taxes, I would recommend that you do that. Um, two years ago, uh, in, during the tax filing season, about 67% of Missourians filed their individual income tax electronically. Last year, that number increased uh, so that we're at about 73% now, and I hope it goes up even higher. Good things about e-filing, it is accurate. We have found that if you e-file your returns, um, that uh, errors are decreased. In fact, we have about 13% fewer errors on e-filed returns. Well, why is that? Uh, the form, for one thing, does the math for you. Uh, uh, it also prompts you to do things like electronically sign your return. You'd be amazed at the number of paper returns we get that just aren't signed, and we can't process those. Um, E-filing is also convenient. You know, you can do that 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, E-filing is also good for uh, quick, uh, a quick turnaround on your refund. If you're due a refund, last year we averaged about uh, three days, just over three days, uh, from uh, an e-filed return to uh, getting a refund, you know, deposited into directly into uh, a bank account. Um, so it's also secure. Um, and uh, once you e-file, you also get uh, proof of filing. You get a little receipt that is emailed back to you. So um, that would be the, the main tip, you know, in encouraging the e-filing. Um, if you aren't going to e-file, for whatever reason, I would still encourage you to come online and look at the electronic forms that are posted there. 
Um, you can fill those out, you can save them, go back to them, make corrections, double check, um, double check your work, and uh, you can print those off and mail them in. So that's, that's convenient. Those forms are also nice because they will also do the math for you. Um, the department also has uh, frequently asked questions online. Uh, we have um, people who are ready to answer the phone and provide assistance. We also have tax assistance centers throughout the state that people can visit if they need help with their taxes. So those are some of the main tips. For the folks in Jefferson City, I've, I've been impressed uh, on a few occasions when on behalf of a client, I've had to go over to the Truman Building and one of your assistance centers is actually in the Truman it Building. It sure is. On the third floor? Uh-huh, room, room 330. And yeah. there are actually three or four workstations there, and mm -hmm. you can just go up to the desk and tell them what type of issue you're, you're, right. you're concerned about. Right. And a, a warm body mm -hmm. will come out and mm -hmm. uh, visit with you, look over the returns, and I found that uh, really pretty impressive for an agency that big mm -hmm. to uh, be able to come in and walk uh, to, to, uh, to talk to somebody without, without, without an appointment mm -hmm. and get, get a lot of things solved. So the folks in Jefferson Great. City, might be alerted to that if you have questions about about uh, state tax return yes. that can't be answered online or by phone. Uh, the Truman Building is, is a place where you could go. Right, I certainly would encourage people to walk in. Um, sometimes if you can just have a little help up front, it will save you know an error and a, a lengthy or frustrating uh, correction process later. So thank you. Okay. Well, the Department of Revenue is not just about collecting taxes. When we come back, we'll tell you how you can get a break from paying taxes on your new home appliances. And also, there's a new kind of renewal sticker for your license plates. We'll be right back. I want to see the world. When you pick up a book, I used to read every night to all the younger kids and let your imagination break free. You won't believe how much fun it can be. Let down your <laughs> Experience a world of adventure, <laughs> excitement, <laughs> and endless possibilities. Get tangled up in a good book. Explore new worlds. Read. Visit read.gov today. Mm-hmm. Two o'clock. Okay. Your employees who serve in the National Guard and Reserve may seem different. They may work a little harder, be more confident, more willing to make the extra effort to get the job done right. So when your employees need time off to serve, remember, it's not just good for our country. It's good for your business. Glad you could all make it. Welcome back. We're talking about taxes today, and now we're going to talk about how to get a break from paying for them. Alana, if I were to purchase a new dishwasher, when would be a good time to do that? Well, I might suggest that you purchase it during the fourth annual Green Sales Tax Holiday. That runs April 19th through the 25th. Okay, and explain to us what that entails. Well, how that works. This is a, a law that was passed in 2008. And basically, if you purchase a qualifying appliance, you don't have to pay the state sales tax at the very least. That's 4.225%. You know, and for a large purchase of an appliance, that can mean significant savings. Local taxing jurisdictions also have the option to opt into the sales tax holiday. So for example, if you live in a place where you would normally purchase your, uh, your appliance in a place that has a local sales tax, that jurisdiction might also opt in mm -hmm. and, and choose to waive its local tax. So that savings can be added on top of the 4.225%. Um, the sales tax holiday is, this is a neat one because the qualifying appliances are those that are Energy Star certified. So you would look for uh, an appliance you know, with that blue Energy Star seal and things that qualify um, are uh, basically the big ticket appliances, you know, washers, refrigerators, freezers, dishwashers, um, heat pumps, um, air conditioners, furnaces. 
um, things like that. So the, the savings applies to them. Um, what I recommend is that people you know, start thinking now about what kind of appliance they, they might want to buy so that they'll be ready for the sales tax holiday. Um, we also describe the holiday as a as a win win win. You know, it's a win for the merchants because their sales, you know, hopefully should increase. It's a win for the consumers. You save the 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 tax money, and you also save on your utility bills by the purchase of the energy efficient appliances. And it's obviously a win for the environment. You know, using the energy efficient Energy Star certified things helps uh, reduce pollution. And that can add to huge savings. It certainly can. Yeah, like you said, a win-win for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, where can consumers go for questions on this green tax holiday? Uh, well, I would recommend going to dor.mo.gov, our website, and we'll have information prominently posted on there. You can click on it and um, get more information. Has the progr program been pretty successful? This is the fourth year. Can you have you got? Is there some data that suggests that there's a pretty good response? Well, I know that it's successful anecdotally. People tell me that they purchased appliances during that holiday, and in fact, I purchased an energy-efficient dishwasher myself a couple of years ago. Um, it's hard to give you solid numbers because I, I, I'm still struggling for a way to isolate particular kinds of sales in a particular month. So. Right. I've, and so if a city or county participates mm -hmm. in this as well as the state, then someone could purchase a large appliance and pay absolutely no taxes. That's correct. In fact, uh, there are some taxing jurisdictions in, in um, certain areas. I think the savings can add up to about uh, a little over 9% um, when, when I did the math. The, uh, we have 47 cities, 11 counties, and I think over a dozen uh, special tax districts that are participating in the holiday this year. So, you know, look around. It, it can add up. Definitely, yes. Okay, well, and everybody wants to save money, so they that, certainly that's do. very helpful information. You know what, I would also be remiss if I did not mention that the, the green sales tax holiday isn't just for Missourians. You know, our friends in surrounding states, our friends from Kansas, for example, can come over and shop during the tax holiday and, and also uh, have the savings, too. Okay. Okay, well, let's turn our thoughts now to this um, new Enhanced Tabs project. What is this new project that you all have going? Well, enhanced license plate tabs. I think everyone um, is familiar with you know, a, a friend, a relative, a coworker who may have had the stickers peeled off of uh, the license plates, and that's certainly annoying. Uh, you have to go in and get uh, replacement ones if they're pulled off. A couple of years ago, <clears throat> the department started a pilot project with um, what we call enhanced tabs. And we rolled the pilot project out uh, in our central office here in Jefferson City and in some license offices on the eastern side of the state. The enhanced license plate tab actually corresponds, the data on the tab corresponds to your license plate. So for example, if your license plate number is ABC123, your tab will also read the same way, ABC123. So there's really uh, less of an incentive for a thief to, peel your, to try to peel your sticker off. It won't match another license plate, right? right. Um, other things that we did with the tab, we um, are printing them on a new kind of material. I call it stretch and snap. If you try to stretch it, it just it breaks apart. So they're difficult to get off in one piece. They're also perforated, uh, which also helps. And um, you know, the uh, law enforcement recognizes the tabs, they appreciate the tabs, and they seem to be helping to deter that kind of tab theft. So um, those tabs are available, like I said, in our central office, and they're okay. also available through uh, mail-in, our, our mail-in process, too, here in central Missouri. Now, I'm not sure, are they available to everyone um, right now? I was under the impression they weren't quite available yet. Right. Um, unfortunately, we have not been able to roll out the equipment to all 183 license offices around the state. Um, but anyone can visit, um, our, our, like I said, our central office here in Jefferson City. They're also available if you renew your license plates online. Uh, you can get them that way and through the mail-in process, too. Okay. Um, is there any additional information that you have for us? Or? Well, um, I certainly would, you know, while we're talking about license plate tabs, I really would encourage people to visit plates.mo.gov. That's our online renewal program, and uh, you, can, you can renew your stickers there. Um, 
and uh, uh, receive them in the mail. You'll get a temporary receipt that you can keep in your car with you until you get your new stickers in the mail. Uh, that's, a, that's a nice option for people who live in a county where the, um, the local county collector provides the property tax information online. You know, we can check that online and then um, if the county participates, then, then you can take advantage of plates.mo.gov for that renewal. How do we handle the motor vehicle inspections? Um, I, I know that periodically the vehicle has to be inspected right. in, in, order, in order to get the license. How does that work online? Right. Um, that's not available for the online transactions okay. just yet. We're trying to expand um, the, the types of transactions that, that can be done there. Uh, for example, right now you can renew uh, passenger, um, uh, uh, passenger vehicles. Uh, what else? ATVs, trailers. We're trying to get boats on there. That would certainly be popular, but um, it's you know programming, programming. So we're we're working on that. You mentioned the 183 uh, fee offices. Mm -hmm. uh, there was uh, though that system was in the news several, several years mm -hmm. ago. A little bit of a flap over um, how how they were assigned. I remember going back. I'm going to show my age. I, I remember when the Department of Revenue when I was a kid, was really looked upon as being uh, very heavily uh, influenced by what administration was in office. And a lot of rank and file people were really, their jobs may have even been in jeopardy. But that's changed quite a bit, hasn't it? Right. Um, directors change over with, you know, right. the changeover right. administrations. But um, that's about it. So the rank, rank and file folks that work, work for the Department of Revenue, and many of them work in Jefferson City, you bet. their jobs are pretty much insulated from the political winds that, that, that might blow through Jefferson City from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> certainly, certainly. We're not a merit agency, but, but right. I, I'd say your assessment is on. Is on. I, I, haven't, I haven't read anything in the news about fee offices lately, so I presume that that's all stabilized now um, in, in, in terms of how they're to be assigned. I think mm -hmm. there was a bid process or an evaluation process. Right. So, the, that's that's all settled down after after that issue came up a couple of years ago. There was an awful lot of work that the Department of Revenue um, undertook in 2009. We worked with the purchasing department uh, in the Office of Administration and bid out all 183 license offices, and that was quite a feat. Um, we were able to award contracts uh, on, on those offices, the, the standard state contract. Um, within, um, gosh, I think the, the first part of 2010, we had changed over all 183 license offices that way. Um, I, I think it's going very well. The, the contracts that the license offices perform under, you know, they bid to provide service in a particular way. We have minimum standards. The license offices were free to, um, you know, provide, um, you know, innovations, other solutions, uh, more efficient ways to uh, perform their services. Um, you know, which they did. And so we've actually seen some really neat innovations in the license offices as a result of the process. We have a few license offices, for example, that um, uh, use a, a, an, an electronic or a queueless system uh, for, um, you know, going and getting your place in line, for example. You can, you know, um, sign in electronically when you get to the office and, you know, you can leave, go have lunch, and the system will call you or, or it will send you a text, you know, when you're next in line so that you can get back over. I'm, I'm excited by innovations like that, and I really think that the bid process has, has helped us, you know, has helped us get there. I'm a fan of our local fee office on Southridge because they serve popcorn. <laughs> there you go. It's a I customer service that. innovation. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All right. Go ahead, Elizabeth. You have some, you have some other more important issues than popcorn to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I was just wondering, was there any other information that you had for us that you would like to share? Uh, well, let's see. What else was I thinking about? You know, while we're, um, while we're talking about uh, license offices and license plates, I guess one other thing I'll mention. In January, we rolled out uh, a new system for uh, personalized plates, the personalize and reserve system. You can go online, enter a configuration, 
um, see if it's available, and if it is, you can reserve it right there online. Um, we did a pretty soft rollout in the beginning, again, just to make sure everything was working well, and so far, so good. So if you're interested in a personalized plate, you might give that a try, too. Is there an additional charge for that? It used to be $25, wasn't it? Uh, there's was a there? personalized uh, plate registration fee. I think it's $15, 15? Okay. right, right, that we collect. You can pay that online. Too. So, I don't know. I, I think that's exciting. Do you, do you have oh, a personalized yeah. plate? I don't. Oh, okay. I'm not sure if I want everybody to know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I think a little anonymity is a good thing sometimes. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, let's see. What else? You know, I've been talking a lot about online things that um, the department does. Obviously, you know, moving services online, a lot of citizens just expect that. You know, they expect to be able to do transactions. Um, that way, because it's efficient, you know, you can save a stamp, you can save a trip to the post office. Um, another online thing that we have uh, done, we, we rolled this out last year, online sales and use tax filing. I was very surprised when I became director of revenue that the, the merchants, you know, small businesses had to actually fill out a little form, write a check, put it in an envelope and mail it in um, to, to file and pay their sales tax. I asked my staff to take a look at that process, and now, as of um, uh, about mid-2011, uh, you can do that online. I actually made a presentation to a group of um, uh, tax preparers. Just before we were rolling out the system, I, I said, this is what you'll be able to do online. I think that's good, right? You know, And they clapped and cheered. <laughs> so, so far, since the system went live, we have had, I think it's over 45,000 returns, sales, sales and use tax returns filed and the taxes paid online that otherwise would have been um, done with, you know, the, the old paper, paper and stamp way, right. which I think is terrific. You know, that also helps us be more efficient. You know, we're not in, we're not doing error correction. Um, and I can use those resources um, to perform other services that I need to perform. So. You know, speaking of sales tax, um, I won't. I won't have you do a prediction, and we could probably devote the whole show to this next time, Elizabeth. But the whole idea of internet sales and mm -hmm. the concept of local merchants being put at a disadvantage because many, uh, you know, the, the LL Beans of the world and the Lands mm -hmm. Ends of the world and the Amazons of the world are able to market their products um, in many instances without uh, the consumer paying sales tax. As you as you talk to your your uh, folks at the national level and and do, do you do you see in the next I'll I'll go ahead and ask you ask you for a prediction do you think do you think in five to ten years that 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 um, the uh, the sales tax system will and will include the internet or, or do you think it's just too 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 big a deal? It, it's an interesting issue that's certainly been a hot topic you know at the state and the federal level. Uh, I. There are, uh, the, the last time I checked, there are, I believe, three bills uh, in Congress right now that would basically put some form of, you know, of, of um, you know, the, the concept into law where, you know, the merchants all have to participate uh, in the, the, the state tax collections. That legislation actually started moving a little more than anyone expected. Um, uh, within the last couple of months, so we'll see. Honestly, I think that the solution probably needs to be a a, a federal one. You know, you know sounds for, like it. Yeah, yeah, good. Certainly something to watch. Right, and it's not going away, for sure. Yeah. Have you been uh, impacted a lot? You know, your you your business is to collect dollars, mm -hmm. eight billion, I think. Uh, in in some in some categories general revenue right <clears throat> but your state agency also you've been you've been impacted by the state budget you've mm -hmm. had to do less uh, more with less mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. how, how's have you have you dealt with your internal budget issues? right you know looking for efficiencies quite frankly you know everyone um, you know has has seen a reduction uh, in their budgets, the Department of Revenue included, um, you know, the, the online efficiencies that uh, I've been talking about really help not only taxpayers and the public, they also help us, you know, to the extent that I can move away from manual processing of tax returns, to the extent that I can um, 
decrease, you know, paper and my own postage that significantly helps. You know, we have undertaken uh, cost reduction projects. I asked my staff to look at, um, you know, just all the paper forms that we use. At the very least, you know, we can reduce the size of the forms, um, make them fewer pages, uh, just honestly print fewer forms. You know, nobody needs a, a stack of forms sitting in a corner collecting dust. You know, print what we need and don't print any more. Try to put them online so we don't, you know, so that we can avoid the print costs altogether. Um, you know, we have moved some, uh, some mailings to postcards. That saves money, too, um, rather than sending, you know, a, a full-size piece of paper in an envelope. That saves, saves postage and paper. So that, that's been what we've we focused on, is looking for efficiencies. How many employees do you have uh, total, and how many in the greater Jefferson City area? Uh, I have a, uh, about 1,200 employees total in the Department of Revenue. I believe that's about 800 or so in the Jefferson City area. And then, of course, we also um, oversee the 183 license offices. Well, I want to thank uh, Elena Berrigan Scott for coming, our Director of Revenue. You've been with the department a little while, but you've been mm -hmm. recently appointed to the director's role. Uh, quite a bit of iron, a lot of irons in the fire, a lot of things going on. Certainly. Uh, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. high volume. Uh, really high volume in terms of transactions and the way you affect Missourians. Elizabeth Hoffman, thank you for you're the you're the you're the brains behind all of this. You're yeah. the producer, and and I appreciate you all you do to set everything up and to help help me out today with That's with okay. the interview. Thank you, thank you for joining us. Okay, uh, so we'll uh, see everybody next time when we'll interview another uh, leader in Jefferson City that we may not know much about. Thanks for joining us today. Bye bye.